Gregorius. High pop up on the left side. Galvis fighting on the sun. One. And it just drops as Gregorius gets a double. Left field is tough. Weather is a surprisingly important part of baseball games. There are plenty of ways, including the one that you just saw, by which the weather can change the outcome of a game. Today, I want to talk to you about the different types of weather that baseball teams need to worry about, and the true perfect weather for a baseball game. Game temperature is one of the most obvious ways in which baseball can be affected by the weather. Have you ever tried to throw a baseball in 35 degree weather? When someone throws a ball and it smacks your glove at that kind of temperature, it can actually kind of hurt when it hits your hand, so baseball players have to consider that when they play in cold weather games. Plus, batters who are gripping the bat in cold weather will more often feel the impact of the ball on the bat when they try to hit it. The reverberation of the ball against the bat in cold weather can be jarring to the batter, and it reduces the speed at which baseballs fly off of the bat, which is important for scoring runs. But why does it matter how hard or how fast baseballs are hit off of a bat? In baseball, hard hit balls are the name of the game. Home runs are most often created by balls that are hit super hard off the bat. Extra base hits like doubles and triples are most often created the same way, and those are the easiest ways in which you can score runs. So when the cold weather affects the batter's ability to hit the ball hard, run creation can also kind of suffer. On the flip side, pitchers really do like the cold, as long as they can grip the baseball properly. Supposedly, pitcher grips are much better when the weather is colder, which means that the pitcher can control the way they throw the ball just a little bit better. That's bad news for the hitter, who relies on the pitcher making mistakes in order to hit the ball. When a pitcher has good control over the stuff that he's throwing, there just aren't as many mistakes being made, which reduces the number of runs scored and the amount of hits made by both teams. I say as long as the pitcher can grip the baseball properly, because if the pitcher's fingers are going numb from the cold, they don't gain any of the benefit from cold weather because they can't control the ball that's in their hand. When the weather is warmer, the batter tends to benefit more. Recent studies have found that an additional 30 degrees of temperature at game time, so for example, a 40 degree Fahrenheit game versus 70 degrees, adds an average of 1.3 runs to the total run scored. 100 degree games see an additional 2.5 runs per game over 40 degree games. Now there are a couple of reasons for this. In warmer weather, batted balls tend to travel further. In fact, a 10 degree increase in temperature generally corresponds to an increase of about 2.5 feet of fly ball distance. So if you do some quick math with me, a fly ball in April on a 40 degree day would travel about 12.5 feet less than if it were hit on a 90 degree day. An extra couple of feet on a fly ball might mean the difference between a long out and a home run, or it can mean a sacrifice fly instead of an out but no run scored. The difference between an out and a home run, especially in a close game, is huge for the outcome of a game, and the primary example of how cold weather can significantly impact the outcome of games. Also, when the weather is warmer, a pitcher's palms can start to get sweaty. Sweat on their hands makes it a little bit harder to grip the balls as they throw them, which can lead to mistakes, which is the exact opposite of what happens on cold days. Again, batters like it when pitchers make mistakes, and warmer weather leads to those types of mistakes. Wind is another huge way that games can be affected by the weather. The wind can either dramatically decrease or increase the number of home runs, depending on the way that the wind flows. If the wind is blowing out, meaning that the wind is directed from home plate towards the outfield, it adds distance and carry to most fly balls. So, if you were to hit a fairly deep fly ball to center field, and the wind was blowing out to center, it could result in a home run when that same ball might result in an out without the wind to help it. At Wrigley Field in Chicago, a 10 mile per hour wind blowing out to the outfield results in a roughly 50% increase in home runs. 50% is a huge deal. The impact of the wind blowing out isn't just restricted to Wrigley Field either. It was found that a 10 mile per hour increase in wind speed adds roughly one extra run to the grand total of the game. When the wind reaches over 20 miles per hour, as it does in only a handful of ballparks, it adds roughly two more runs to the game total. This is important for baseball managers and sport bettors alike. 
who have to consider this when trying to predict the outcome of the game, as well as make decisions on who to start. Wind can also work in the opposite way though. When the wind is blowing in, meaning that the wind is directed from the outfield towards home plate, fly ball distance can be dramatically reduced. A ball destined for the outfield bleachers or a home run with no wind can suddenly turn into a fly ball out when the ball is hit into the wind. You can also see the effect wind has in American football when the wind is blowing towards a field goal kicker. It dramatically reduces the distance that the kicker can kick said football. All baseballs hit in the air face air pressure, regardless of where the game is being played. The pressure acts against the baseball to cause friction, which then causes the baseball to slow down as it flies through the air, which eventually stops the ball from flying any further. When games are played at sea level, the air is more dense. Higher density means more air pressure and thus more friction against the baseball. Now when we get to higher elevations, the air is thinner. This is part of what makes climbing a mountain harder when you get into higher altitudes. There is simply just less air to breathe in, because the air is spread further and is thinner as a result. Thinner air means that there is less pressure and less friction and thus less resistance against the baseball as it flies through the air. So when baseball games are played at higher altitudes like they are in Denver, the baseballs fly further than if the game were being played under the exact same conditions in Boston or Philadelphia. This results in a higher number of home runs and runs scored overall when games are played at high altitudes. Back in the 1990s, games played in Denver, which is the home of the Colorado Rockies, saw 3.2 home runs per game. However, when the Rockies played away from Denver in lower altitude or sea level parks, the amount of home runs per game dipped to just 1.93. So there's a pretty significant difference in the home runs and runs scored between games played in thinner air and games played closer to sea level. Additionally, when it gets hotter, regardless of the elevation, the air becomes less dense, which can lead to some of the same effects I just described. Increasing temperatures at any elevation cause the air to expand, resulting in a thinner composition and increasing the distance that baseballs fly. This is another example around our early discussion about why warm weather is good for hitting. You can see this particular example in effect at Chase Field in Phoenix, Arizona, where it gets very, very hot during the baseball season. This one's pretty obvious. When the ball is hit into the air and into the sun, wearing sunglasses can only help you so much. A tiny white ball against the sun or against white clouds is gonna be pretty hard to track no matter where you stand. It's especially bad during day games when the sun is directly overhead or right in the eyes of the baseball players. So now that we've learned about the different types of weather that affect baseball most significantly, we can use that to determine the ideal baseball weather. However, the ideal weather depends on what you want to see out of your baseball game. If you want to watch a low scoring pitcher's duel with a ton of strikeouts and few walks, then the weather you want is most often found during April games. If you want a low scoring game, you want cold weather, because the pitchers are going to be able to grip the ball a little bit better, and the ball doesn't jump off the bat as easily. You would also want wind coming in from left field, because it will tamper the fly balls hit that way, and the faster the wind is coming in, the better. And with more players hitting right-handed than left-handed, there are likely going to be more deep fly balls hit towards left field than other parts of the field. You would also want the game to be played in a sea level park at night, as the air is more dense at sea level and the nighttime lowers temperatures even further. That kind of weather is going to keep the game fairly low scoring. If you wanted to see a high scoring slugfest with a ton of home runs and a lot of runs scored, then the weather you would want is found more often in July and August games during the summer. You want a warm weather game where the pitchers might struggle to grip the ball and the ball flies off the bat easier than if it were cold. You would want wind to blow out from home plate and it could blow out to center field or left field since those help more hitters than a wind might that might be blowing out to right field. You would want the game to be played in an especially hot area of the country, like Phoenix or Houston, or you could want it to be played in Denver, where the air is much thinner. For an added bonus, you would want the pitchers to throw a little slower and have a tense tendency to give up more fly balls than ground balls, as those both advantage hitters. That kind of weather is going to help the run total increase. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about baseball weather characteristics and how they can change the outcome of games. 
Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time on Highly Technical Sports.